Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and today we're going to talk about networking our lighting. That's right, in today's day and age, having networks and having our lighting on a network is more common than it's ever been before. We used to just plug all of our lights into DMX and plug that into the console and we'd be good to go. But today, the network has taken a place within our lighting more than ever before. So what I really want to answer with this video is a couple simple questions. One, why in the world should I even think about networking with my lighting? Because ultimately it makes things more complicated and so if it's not necessary you shouldn't do it. That's my opinion. Um, so why? Number two, then we're going to talk about the gear involved, okay? And some basic, typical network setups that we see within lighting. We're going to go over some terms and debunk some myths that you may have not have known within lighting. Then, as we go through the rest of this month here on YouTube, we're going to cover more about networking. We're going to talk about technical terms and give you the basics of what you need to know and then show you where we have more help within Learn Stage Lighting Labs as well as on the regular Learn Stage Lighting website. So why in the world should you network your lights? There's really two big reasons that I see, especially for the beginner or intermediate with stage lighting, that you would want to network your lights. The first is so that you can grab a tablet and turn it on, get wireless control of your lighting system. Okay, be able to walk around the room, control your console, and have your lights do whatever you need them to do from stage, from the booth, from the middle of the audience, wherever. Okay, so remote control is the very first reason, and it's a darn good reason. When I first started with lighting, we had these things that we called ARFUs, um, remote focus units. And the ARFU, um, it just RFU, <laughs> was a box that either wirelessly or wired connected to our console, and then we could type things in on our console's keypad. Most of these ARFUs didn't have any way back, uh, any info back from the console, and, you know, sometimes they had range issues, etc., and, you know, it was another thing to carry around. But they were helpful. Today, when most lighting consoles are either computerized, meaning they're basically a computer but it's a standalone console, or actually on a computer, there are it's easier than ever to get control of whatever software you're using or console and be able to do that wirelessly. And be able to step out of the booth where you can't see everything or step out of wherever your console would be um, and see some different perspectives and tweak things. So that's the first good reason to use networking in your lighting. The second is to get more output, more universes from your lighting console. One trend that we started to see a few years ago, which I think is a good trend, is that instead of having all of the universes for our lighting system on the back of our lighting console as DMX jacks, we started to see the trend where you might get a few on your console, maybe you don't get any, and the rest are available via the network. Now, this may be a console net, a proprietary type of networking just for your console that works with nodes um, from your console's brand name. We'll talk about nodes in a minute. This could be ArtNet or SACN as well. There's a few other protocols, but those are the major ones and the major way you get data out of a lighting console. And what this enables is that um, you can get your DMX outputs closer to the stuff, the lights, the dimmers, the whatever that you're controlling. You can get those DMX outputs closer to those items. Not only that, but as we continue to move forward in time, more and more of the items we control, whether that be lighting fixtures, um, you know, dimmers, media servers, whatever we're controlling, more of these things will take that networked data directly. So now instead of having a, a pile, literally sometimes on, on bigger shows, a, you could have a pile, a thick wad of DMX cables, you can have one network cable and that would get you all of your output from your console 
and be able to break it out to DMX ports for your stage and also directly for units that can take that signal directly. And so we can see that there are some advantages to using a network protocol versus regular DMX. Now, there are also some disadvantages, okay? It's going to be more complex to set up, generally, unless you have a huge network. Um, even then, it might be more complex. Hard to say. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to take more to set up. You're also using an Ethernet-based network, um, and so what that means is you're not going to go over 330 feet of cable. Okay, many people say less, and often that is the case if, if conditions aren't just perfect, okay? And so you've got that restriction. DMX can go much further depending on the cable you use and some other factors. DMX can go well over a thousand feet, okay? Um, and so that's another disadvantage you want to be aware of. So using a network for your lighting isn't something that you should just jump and do because it sounds like a good idea. We first want to define how to do that. And so when we talk, and so when we talk about networking, when we talk about hooking this stuff together, I just want to briefly go over in the back half of this video what a network looks like. And so to begin with the basics, at your home, you might have some kind of a box with antennas that could look something like this. And we call this often a router. And I, I'm going to use that in air quotes because when you have a unit in your home like this may be provided by your cable provider or your, your TV, your internet provider, um, it's really got at least three, maybe four different network devices in it. And when we're working with show networks, when we're working with lighting on a network, we don't need everything that's within one of these things. And so you might say, well, I've got my insert name of utility company you know, router sitting in my basement, sitting in my front room, whatever. And that unit, just to give you a little in info, does three or four different things, okay? The first thing it does when the internet gets to your house is, and this is a good Mythbuster here, is it's a modem, okay? A modem to connect the provider's service to your house. Then it's a router. This is to route the traffic from your smaller network to the larger world's network, okay? Then, on the back here, for example, on this one, we've got four of these yellow ethernet ports, okay? We've got the internet coming in on the blue one for these yellow ones. That's a switch, okay? Which forwards network traffic between different ports. Last, there's antennas sticking up out of this thing because it has wireless. It's an access point. Okay, and so I, I don't have time to go deeply into what all the meanings of these things are, but it is a good time to bust one big myth of lighting show networks. And that is, a lot of people think when you put your lighting on a network, and I understand because I, I, I get why this makes sense, people think, okay, putting my lighting on a network means it's going to access the internet, or it's going to be accessing the internet um, we'll be, you know, contacting the internet with our lighting devices. And that's often not the case. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, lighting devices to work, to be able to send that data from your console to your various devices, to be able to get remote control on your tablet, etc., does not require the internet. Not at all. But it does require a network or multiple computers hooked together. And so the very simplest show network, the very simplest lighting network that we can build is just one of these guys, okay? This is literally just a little unmanaged network switch, okay? Very inexpensive and very simple to configure. Now, an unmanaged switch is what we use for, honestly, a lot of simple show networks, okay? We connect our different devices together, plug them all in, assign IP addresses to them, and they just work. Now, you heard me there say assign IP addresses. Okay, that's, that's a big key here. So a switch does not have routing generally. Sometimes smart switches do, and they don't have something called a DHCP server. This is what hands out those IP addresses to the various devices automatically in the device that we often call a router. 
okay now that's actually the DHCP portion of the router could be in a switch as well if it's a managed switch or a smart switch this one is not okay and using a basic switch like the one I just put down there will allow you to connect consoles to nodes computers to consoles etc etc but what a switch lacks is an access point it lacks the ability to be wireless and so well, we like our diagram with our switch and it's nice and simple and it's easy and we just hook a couple wires together, set some IP addresses and it'll work forever. Um, putting in a router and or access point can help us to, instead of having a switch, maybe getting one of these, you know, home or small business style routers, we can put that in our network and now everything plugs in or connects wirelessly to the router and they're all able to be on the same network. Again, the, the gear you get and the gear that you use in your system is really gonna depend on what you need the system to do. Do you need wireless control of the console? Can your console support it? If it can, I highly advocate setting it up because it's a huge help. If that's the case, you're gonna need some kind of wireless access point. Now, this may mean, just to go off on another tangent, that you have a facility network within your building already that you want to tie into, okay? And that's totally doable. Password protect everything, and generally you'll be good, okay? You could also set up your own network, etc., etc., but we're getting our head ahead of ourselves here a little bit. So, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at networking. It's really been designed for somebody who doesn't have any experience with this stuff, to start to get the basics, to start to understand the why and how of networking in your lighting. Now, we're gonna follow this up with some more videos about some of the terminologies that we run into when we're networking, and also uh, how to do some basic hookup of a console, etc. We're gonna walk through all of this stuff, and so I don't want you to miss out on any of it. So. Be sure to subscribe here, and if you do want to dive deeper, I've got a full action plan called Networking for the Lighting Person, and it's inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. You can check that out here as well. Now, I will see you guys here on our next video if you're subscribed, where we're going to talk even more about networking, hit some of those terms, and really get ready to start hooking things up. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.